want to give a quick shout out to all my patrons. Thank you so much for all of the continued support. Hey everybody, we are nearing the end of the year and I have a bunch of videos that I like to make at the end of the year, kind of recapping the year and doing some top 10 lists of things in various different categories. And today I'm going to go over the top 10 most underrated books that I read in 2023. I'll talk about why I feel like they're underrated. It's some kind of combination of a low amount of reviews or, um, you know, not enough people really liking it. We'll talk about it as we get there. Um, or just in general, I feel like I loved it a lot more than the masses do. But let's start with number 10, and it is Blood Song. This is uh, part one of the Raven's Shadow series by Anthony Ryan. It's got 84,000 Goodreads ratings um, with an overall rating of 4.42, and it was written in 2011. Now, this is on the list. Um, you know, it, I, I Borderline didn't really want to include it because, you know, it is rated. I mean, a lot of people have read this thing. 84,000 ratings is is a lot. Like, look, that's not high compared to somebody like Brandon Sanderson, but way higher, way higher than the average book. But I don't hear people talking about it to the level that I feel about it. I mean, this book is a masterpiece. It's so wonderfully written from start to finish. It just captivated me. It really blew me out of the water. I mean, I know this was popular when it came out. But I think because the sequel books ended up being uh, rather subpar, um, the series kind of dropped off the map. And I think that's I think that's a shame. Not only do I think it's a shame because I wish the sequels were better, I just got done reading one and I didn't really like it, um, but because you don't really need to read the sequels to enjoy this, this story. I mean, the first book could be read as a standalone, and people kind of should read it as a standalone, in my opinion. Um, it, it, but it's just, it's amazing. I mean, it, it follows this, uh, this young man who ends up going or being forced to go to this um, academy to make himself an extremely strong fighter. And that sounds like something that's been done a million times before, and, and that's true. But this has this darker kind of tone to it, um, very mature writing, with a plot that's just so wonderfully done that I don't really want to explain anything about because it's just it, – it blows you away. Um, the magic in this, although it's not really heavy once you really understand what the blood song is, it's very ingeniously done. The character writing is just magnificent. Um, and the, the world building is just incredible. I mean, you just get wrapped up in this world. You feel like you're there. You, you go through these intense emotions with the characters. Um, and really, from the first few pages, I just found myself unable to rip my, rip my eyes away from this thing. It's incredible. And, and I kind of demand that everybody go read it if they haven't. And if you haven't read it since 2011, go read it again. Um, so, number nine is Dungeon Crawler Carl. This is part one of the Dungeon Crawler Carl series by Matt Dineman. It's got 15,000 ratings and a 4.56 overall rating. And the first book came out in 2020. Um, now, this book is kind of has a huge cult following. Uh, the people that are really into it are really, really into it. Now, a book with 15,000 ratings um, is not huge, but like there's a vibrant subreddit for it. There's a there's a vibrant Discord. I mean, a large amount of Patreons. Um, it's got a very thriving, you know, core group of people that that just love this thing. Um, you know, you find that in these stories that follow this lit RPG progression fantasy type of thing, which is very much what this is. Uh, but this book is just fun. I mean, it follows this character Carl who um, gets wrapped up in the fact that the Earth has essentially been taken over by aliens. They create this worldwide game show where everybody has to go through these uh, progression level of dungeons, kind of like a if you play Diablo, like you go deeper and deeper and deeper, the enemies get harder and harder, um, everybody's in there at the same time fighting against these enemies and against each other, I um, mean, trying to be the one that can make it to the end, uh, if anybody can make it to the end. Um, but it's got these really fun video gaming elements to it where you the, the character's getting new weapons, getting new spells, uh, getting new stat boosts. Um, but beyond all that, it's got this amazing blend of absolutely hilarious um, and very dark, um, which I, I love that blend, um, but just very, very addicting. And you're going to know really quickly whether this is for you or not. I mean, you only really need to read like 100 pages or so. And if you're loving it, strap in because there's a lot of books out there and they're all extremely fun. Um, and the audiobook is just a masterclass. Uh, Jeff Hayes, who does the audiobooks, is just 
a, a god of audiobook narration. Um, and and I think you'll you got to give it a shot if you're if you're into audiobooks. But just the physical physical book would be great too. Um, number eight is Empire in Black and Gold. This is the first book in the Shadows of the Apt series by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This only has eleven thousand ratings, which is a, which is crazy, um, and a three point seven four rating, which is quite low for uh, for an epic fantasy story. And it was written in two thousand eight. How is this book not enormous? Now, Adrian Tchaikovsky um, is much better known for writing sci-fi, but the first things that he wrote was this 10-book series, uh, The Shadows of the Act. And it's it's incredible. I mean, everything that anybody would like out of an epic story is here. And not only is it this really fun, grand, sweeping story in the in the you know, Wheel of Time, Stormlight Archive, um, A Song of Ice and Fire type of realm. Uh, it's not those stories, but it's that multi-POV story where you're hopping around telling this huge kind of, you know, you're trying to solve the uh, the crisis that's going on here and this internal political uh, infighting and, you know, worlds fighting against each other. Not actual worlds, but, you know, different you know, countries fighting against each other. And all the while, you got this backdrop. It's this really fun, uh, you know, fantasy elements where all the characters are uh, like half human, half bugs, and they have these different traits associated with the bugs. You know, you've got ant-like creatures. You've got, you know, bee-like creatures. You've got all these different things. Uh, they tie together really nicely. Wonderful writing. And, and I'm just hooked. Number seven is The Empire That Comes Before. This is part one of the Prince of Nothing series by R. Scott Baker. Um, and it's got 21,000 Goodreads ratings and a rating of 3.82. And it was written in 2003. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people that are into like dark fantasy um, or in the Malazan kind of realm of things, of complex, uh, will always tell you about this thing because they've, they've all read it. And I put it off for a long time. I was a little intimidated by it. And I tried it a few months ago, and it's just got my mind blown. It, it scratches that itch that Malazan scratched. It's not Malazan. It's not as fantasy-heavy with these different races, although there are some. But, you know, it's, it's a little more straightforward um, in terms of, like, the, the characters. Um, not the way they're written. They're written beautifully. Um, but it's more centers around humans that are in a holy war. And looking at things from multiple sides of that holy war, why it's happening. But these, the theming here is amazing. The, the way that the story is written is amazing. The prose, incredible. The characters, absolutely wonderful. The huge cast, the world that just feels like it's just bursting with life. I mean, you look at the map and you're like, oh my God, you could just soak it in for hours. Um, it, you know, it's, it is extremely bleak. What, maybe one of the more, like, the bleakest stories that I've ever read. Um, not to the point where you just, like, want to slit your wrist, but it's not, there's no happiness here. Um, but I love stories like that. And for me, that makes me happy. So, awesome stuff. Moving on to number six, and it is 16 Ways to Defend a Walled City. This is part one of the Siege series by uh, K.J. Parker. It's got 9,000 ratings uh, in an overall rating of 4.07, and it was written in 2019. Um, this is, ends up being a trilogy, the, uh, the Siege series, but the first one uh, I think is the best. And it, it tells the story of this character who is an engineer, and he is stuck inside a walled city while it is under siege. And he quickly finds himself, uh, by a turn of uh, crazy events, to be the leader of the defense, even though he's this lowly engineer. So it's all about him trying to save this city, but not having a shred of political sense and really just looking at things like an engineer would. Uh, and really logical. Let me try to, I gotta solve this. Don't worry about that. I'll get to it when I need it. I'm just bang, 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 trying to do this thing. And it's really ingeniously written. Um, it's extremely witty. I found myself laughing a lot. Um, not just on the dialogue, but the situations that are happening here. Uh, the main character is just absolutely wonderful. Now, the series does struggle a little bit because um, the main character in all these is, is different. It takes place in the same city, but it, it's, you know, time jumps and dealing with a new character. But they all kind of feel like the same character. Um, but I don't mind that because the character is awesome. Uh, it's just very, very fun story that I think more people need to check out. Um, the author actually is not named K.J. Parker. That's a uh, pseudonym. 
And his name's Tom Holt, actually, which is a, a, a rather well-known author who's written a lot of stuff before this. So I'll just throw it out there. But if you look at the book, it does say K.J. Parker. Uh, number five is Empire of Silence. This is uh, the first book in the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. It's got uh, 9,000 Goodreads ratings uh, with an overall score of 4.04, and it was published in 2018. I think this series could end up being the next big thing in uh, in fantasy sci-fi books. This is a blend of fantasy and sci-fi. Um, it tells the story of uh, Hadrian Marlowe, the Sun Eater. It's told in this, um, what is it called? The framing narrative, kind of thing like uh, like The Name of the Wind, where you have this character telling a story. Uh, so the, the character's in the present tense, but he's telling it about his past, uh, catching everybody up to where he's at. And he's the most notorious uh, person of all time because he ended up um, blowing up a sun, I think it's blowing it up, and destroying an entire um, race of aliens uh, that were at war with, uh, with, with his people. And, but, you know, quite literally committing genocide against an entire, you know, millions and millions and millions, and if not billions of, of, uh, of these aliens. And... Um, the writing is so beautiful. It's it's such great writing. And I don't understand how he can do it. Because the guy was like in his early 20s when he wrote this thing. Maybe mid-20s. It doesn't seem humanly possible for somebody to have some little experience and bust out something so magical. Um, it, the, the plot is it starts out a little slow, but it gets picked up pretty quick. Um, it just it, it captivated me. And I'm not even a big sci-fi guy, although this is considered like sci-fantasy because it definitely has some fantasy elements to it. But more so in the later books, the first one does kind of feel like a, like a sci-fi book. Um, and just awesome, awesome stuff. And I I think I recommend this book to people that I know in real life more than any other uh, any other book. Uh, number four is The Grace of Kings. This is uh, the first book in the Dandelion Dynasty series by Ken Liu. It's got 20,000 Goodreads ratings with an overall score of 3.77, and it was uh, published in 2015. Now, this uh, might not have made the cut because it, a lot of people do know about this thing, so is it really underrated? But it's underrated because I consider the series like top two or three best fantasy series that I've ever read. And it, it's just incredible. I, I devoured all, um, all four of these books. Um, it's a Quadrology? Is that what it's called? Quadrology? Um, quartet is another name for it, but it, it's just, it's amazing. The f first book is the one that will make it or break it for you, though, because it's written in such a unique style. It's almost as if it's like a history book, like a zoomed, like a sped up history of this, of this world, um, and, and shows the central conflict going on between it, which is kind of like a retelling of the fall of the Han dynasty in ancient China. And it's, it's just incredible. I've never read a book so fast paced. Um, I, I've never read a book that captivated me so quickly from the first page. Um, and it's just so beautiful because it, it, it's essentially like a prequel story because the second, third, and fourth books are all this cohesive narrative. Uh, but the first one just tells you about setting up the stage for that on this major, major, major event that happened in the fall of, of one dynasty and the rise of another and, and why it happened and really just setting the backdrop for what's about to happen. And it's just wonderful. I, I, it's so fast. I mean, you, every page, something major is happening. It, it doesn't give you any time to soak up anything. Now, I would probably hate it if all the books that I read were like this. Uh, but then the, the series slows down, tells the real story. Um, and it's just, it's beautiful from start to finish. Um, number three on this list is The Last Light. This is, um, this is part of the Wandering In series by Pirate Abba. This has a thousand Goodreads ratings with a score of 4.62. And, and it's, uh, it was published in 2021. Now, The Wandering In certainly has more than a thousand people that have read and, uh, and liked this thing because it has an enormous following uh, on the webpage for The Wandering In. The people that read it are obsessed with it. It, a lot of people like that's all they read is they just they devour it. Um, it's got this enormous community. I mean, the author is one of, if not the most um, paid author on Patreon for an author. Uh, it like literally thousands of Patreons. Um, the people are just obsessed with this thing. I mean, if you don't believe me, go check out their Discord. Uh, it's just like bursting at the seams with activity and 
thousands of people on it talking all the time. It's nuts. Uh, this is a progression um, style book with a lit RPG, but very light lit RPG elements. So it's not like this character gets a stat boost. It's more like characters have classes, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, and they can level up and they get powers when they get that. But it's not going to the minutia uh, that some of the other um, books that are in this lit RPG category go. Um, but it, I'm obsessed with this thing. I, I, I read the first one and I was like, this is amazing. The writing quality is not great, but the story is perfect. Um, and then I read the second one. I was like, wow, the, the writing quality has gone up. And then I read the third and the fourth and the fifth. And the writing style continued to elevate to the point where you can't discern that this author is uh, is writing essentially a web serial. Um, the author writes more uh, uh, prolifically than any author alive, uh, probably in any genre. I mean, uh, huge, huge chapters, uh, like like multiple times a week. It's crazy. I mean, I, I, I've read so far a fraction of it and I've read like the entire Wheel of Time already. And I've read like, honestly, like a fraction of it. It's nuts, uh, but you got to check it out. Uh, number two is The Wolf. This is part of the Under the Northern Sky series by Leo Carew. Um, it's got 3,000 Goodreads ratings with an overall score of 3.87 and it was published in 2018. Now, this is not my favorite book that I read in the year. It's not top two, but I loved it. And I just hear quite literally nobody talking about it. I don't get it. I mean, this series is just as captivating as the bigger epic fantasy stories that you know and love. And I, is it the publisher do them dirty? I don't get it. Is it self-published? Maybe the author did himself dirty? I don't know. Uh, but it's just, it's incredible. I mean, it, it's, it, it follows the story of this character who finds himself... Um, with his father um, getting killed, and he takes over the kingdom. and But he's not ready for it, because the kingdom is at war with an outside force, and now there's, because he's so unprepared for it, a civil war brewing. And he's trying to fend these off. You get this multi-POV thing where you get these characters uh, on the other side of the war, um, and it's just the, the politics in it, the battles in it, the, the twists and the turns, it just has everything that you would love from this epic style story. And I truly, truly don't get why more people aren't talking about this thing. Um, and the number one book on this list is The Eleventh Cycle. This is the first book in the Mistland series by Kian Ardalan. And it's got 614 ratings as of the time of me getting this out with an average score of 3.78. And it was published this year in 2023. I do get a little bit why this book isn't more popular because it is it is dark it is bleak I mean it's kind of styled after like uh, like from soft games like Dark Souls and so it, it's it's extremely dark I mean there's moments in the story that are darker particularly one that's the darkest thing that I've ever read in the, in, in my entire life um, not just in fantasy but history as well it's 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 mind blowing and it's just so well done. And the multi POV story, um, bleak as all get up. And you get characters with the different races. Uh, you've got this very crazy, uh, like almost feels like an alien being that's kind of like waking up and kind of coming out and, and trying to like mess with the world and the world's going into a new phase. And, um, these characters, it's extremely well characters, uh, that are, it's just, I can't get out how amazing, amazing this book is. And 614 ratings. I, I get that the book came out this year, but I thought this thing was going to blow up. I mean, people that like a more grim, dark story, why are they not reading this? I, I, I Maybe it just didn't, I, I don't understand how some books catch on and some books don't. Because this guy, Ken Arnalon, deserves it. Now, uh, there are some faults with it. There's some very awkward sex in the story uh, that just feel like super out of place. Uh, but they're easy to just like kind of laugh at how ridiculous it is and then move on to the good stuff. Um, but yeah, amazing stuff, but don't read it unless you're into really, really dark stuff. So uh, those are my 10. I I'm curious what your 10 are. Um, let me know in the comments what are some of uh, the most underrated stories that you read in 2023. And I'll look forward to reading and responding to them. So that's it for me. Thank you so much. And as always, happy reading to you. Thanks again to all my patrons with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier and Librarian tier patrons, Anna G, CJ, Doust, Darren, Gregory, Jonathan, Nathan T, Nev's Book Channel, Orthodoxia, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Sydney Baker, Tay C, Tahir, Anna, Andra, Blair, 
Brock, Evan, Fanaxan, Harry B, Joe, Cat Mick, Michael Sugarman, Sky, TW57, Wacky, and Zion. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video, and if you want to watch some more content from my channel, click over here and I've got some good videos for you. Thanks so much.